are here with me once again. I'm Kiana Ashley, and you have arrived at Destination Transformation. Yes, and as promised, I am delivering Men's Mental Health Mondays on a Tuesday. I was feeling a bit under the weather yesterday. I had to do a lot of self-care so I could get back right here with y'all. I appreciate your patience. I apologize for the delay. So I want to talk about a very important topic this week, and that is the stigma surrounding men's mental health, black men's mental health that is. Now black men are 25% more likely, 25% more likely to develop or experience symptoms of mental health disorders, especially PTSD, ADHD, and depression. Now all of those mental health disorders that I just mentioned have environmental factors um, that increase your risk of those specific disorders and those are environmental factors that plague the black community every day homelessness and poverty 40 percent of african americans are living in some level of poverty exposure to violence exposure to trauma and accessibility of adequate adequate health care with providers who are multiculturally competent to understand and treat black people now what's going on in the world that really perpetuates the stigma is the fact that everything in the system and i mean healthcare system education system the justice system all of those things create this distrust in any on any platform of people who could possibly help anybody in the black community who should be trying to advocate for us. There are very little groups, there are very little resources that advocate for black men's mental health. And I found that quite odd because it is the system that created these conditions for y'all. It is the system that created all of those environmental factors I listed. Your poverty, your homelessness, that comes from the inability to get jobs because you're discriminated against. It comes from your lack of resources, your lack of proper education in your school systems. And it, it just, it bothers me because nobody wants to face that. If, if it meant offering adequate mental health health care to black men, it will mean that they would have to face all of those systems that have perpetuated your risk for these specific mental health disorders. It will mean they will have to face and stand in the truth of what was developed to keep y'all in a place that feels very hopeless. You're very standoffish for a reason. You don't want to go seek help for a reason, I get it. But this is where the importance of education and support in our community really comes into play. So the biggest thing is that there are not enough of black mental health professionals. It's just not enough for us to treat all of the issues that's going on with black men. Because black men, you're not just carrying what's going on with you. you carrying your grandmother, your grandfathers, your great-grandfathers, all that. All of their trauma. You're carrying your own trauma. And, and most likely, if you're watching this, you're probably a man who has a family who looks up to you for support. You have a loved one. You have a little brother. You have a niece. You have a nephew. You got a mama, a sick relative. Somebody is dependent on you. You have all of these stressors, and yet you can't even deal with them. You can't get help with them. So how do we expect you to be able to support your family? when you can't even have the ability to take care of yourself properly. And that's not always a fault of your own. Yes, men, you gotta learn to talk about these things 
what's going on with you. But where do you go? Who do you go to? They stress multicultural competence and multicultural training for therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists of all backgrounds, of all colors. They drilled that into my schooling as a mental health therapist. But who's really, are they just getting enough of that information in school to pass a test? Or are they really concerned about being aware enough, knowledgeable enough, empathetic enough to understand what a black client is going through when they come into their office? Black men are, black people in general, are typically misdiagnosed. And the reason behind that is because psychologists, psychiatrists alike misinterpret the symptoms that you explain to them. Now, this is no fault to our own either. You know, us being, black people being under the blanket of, I don't, I'm not crazy. I don't need to go to see no therapist. We don't identify with using the verbiage that when, we, when mental health therapists or when psychologists hear, we can be like, oh, that's depression. Oh, that's anxiety. We don't say we're depressed. We don't say we're feeling anxious. Most of the time, statistics have shown that when a black man goes into an office for a mental health therapy, they describe their symptoms quite different. And the symptoms are usually physical symptoms, headaches, migraines, body stiffness, feeling very tired. Now those particular symptoms can fit under an array of different mental health disorders. But that's where the lack of proper care comes in. It is the therapist's job to ask you further questions to further get clarity so that they can make an accurate diagnosis. But they don't ask those questions for whatever reason. They don't ask those questions. So what we can do, what you can do, black men, is to learn the verbiage. Be okay. And this is where you have to step away from that stigma of what black mental health is to us. Doesn't mean you crazy, doesn't mean you weak. It just means you got some things to work out so that you can be your best self for everybody that's dependent on you. Read up on what depression is. Read up on what anxiety is. I'm not saying go read a whole list of, of mental health disorders. But just educate yourself. That's where the, 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 the disconnect happens. Educate ourselves. Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling sad? Are you feeling a little under the weather? There's a, little, there's a lot of things that just go left unsaid because we don't have that verbiage. But again, it's up to the therapist to be able to step above what you're saying and ask more questions before they misdiagnose you. And what happens when they mis misdiagnose you is they give you medication that's not working for you. And what's going to happen when you take that medication and it doesn't work, it's only going to reinforce all of those negative thoughts you already had about mental health. And that is, that is oh, it doesn't work for me anyway. And in fact, 40% of African Americans, 40% of African Americans have a gene in their metabolic system that does not metabolize medication the same as whites and Asians. 40% of African Americans have a gene that in their metabolism, in their metabolic system, does not process medications quite the same as whites and Asians. There's something there. There's still a lot of research being done on that about different medications that affect different ethnicities differently. Now, there's only 40% of African Americans that that affects, but there are 29 known medications that have very significant 
ethnic and cultural differences in how they work in the body for different groups. Specifically antidepressants, specifically antidepressants. So what you're going, what you're going to want to do is, is if you are considering medications, make sure that your psychiatrist or your mental health provider gives you a, starts you off with a low dose. And what you have to do is give yourself time to feel that medication because your your metabolism is is processing it real slow. So you're gonna it's gonna take some time to feel it. Give it some time before you give up on it, especially if you really need it. Okay, give it some time because a lot of the times you're gonna say you're gonna wait a couple of weeks. Say I'm not feeling anything. You're gonna go back to your doctor. They're gonna hike up your dosage and what's going to happen when they hike up your dosage is that your system is going to be really concentrated with this specific medication which in turn can increase your risk of experience experiencing those negative side effects that they talk about you know the little negative side effects they talk about what happens to you real fast in the commercials those it increases your chances of experiencing those negative effects so give it some time to work before you go back to your psychiatrist to tell him that it's not working. It's not that it's the medication that might not be working. It could be, but it could be not. But give it some time for you to feel it because your system as an African-American is going to process that very slowly and have him increase it gradually. Otherwise, your system is going to be bombarded with too much and you're going to feel worse than you actually should feel. Okay? And when you are selecting a black therapist, be sure that you are able to find one that is competent enough that you are comfortable with to treat you. And that could, like I said, there's not many, there's not many African American mental health therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, not a lot of us. But there are some resources that I have where you can look for one. First of all, you have myself. You can always visit itransformyoucoaching.com. I do not do medications, but I do offer a very holistic approach to helping you maintain any of the symptoms that you may be experiencing. Okay? So if you are comfortable seeing me, myself, through my company, Finally You, please feel free to visit my website at trans itransformyoucoaching.com and we can figure something out about how to help you, okay? But other resources, other resources you can go to are some really awesome websites that cater to black mental health specifically, and that's melanin, melaninmentalhealth.com, okay? Africanamericantherapist.com and blacktherapistrock.com. They have a directory Oh, one more. Psychologytoday.com also has a directory specifically for African American therapists. So try those. You got four resources, well, five, including me. Five resources right there for you, black man, to get your mental health together. Reach out. I do all forms of therapy. I can see you face to face if you are in the DMV area. I can do. Video chat, I can do over the phone, whatever suits you best. But if you prefer a face-to-face -face therapeutic session, definitely reach out to those websites that I provided to you. Definitely reach out. Definitely do that because you need it. Everybody that's depending on you needs you to be well. We already know you're strong, but this, we need you to be, be well completely and fully, okay? And when you go and, and book a therapist, make sure you're asking the right questions. How many African-American clients do they see? Do they have any on their caseload? What is their background? What do they specialize in? You wanna, it's not just about you going to get treatment, it's about knowing that it's if it's a good fit. You have to be comfortable. Don't just let them give you whoever. You get to choose, because this is your healing. This is your healing men, and we need you to be well. So you take charge of that, okay? And some things that you can look for so far as understanding 
what's happening with your body if you're going through any form of mental health disorders okay are you feeling sad are you feeling confusion are you having excessive fears worries any mood changes are you feeling like you're having trouble coping with things are you having a sense of detachment from reality are you feeling like you're 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 floating on cloud nine a lot of times you don't feel like you are able to connect with people eating disorders because eating disorders are one of the top five mental health disorders that plagues men yes is your sex drive low or is it too high anything that anything in excess is something to watch out for are you angry more than normal are you having especially if you are having suicidal thoughts these are, these are all mental health signs of mental health issues that you might need to seek treatment okay and all of these things can be exacerbated by your environment you're at risk be aware of that you are more at risk than anybody any other general population out there just due to your this is not even talking about the brain chemistry we're not even talking about uh, what's going on with genetics it might be in your family that increases your risk too but we don't even talk about that we're talking about just your environment alone you have to be aware of that because you are being exposed to things that are going to make you even more prone to developing a mental health disorder other risks that play into that like i said genetics stressful life situations hence your environment diabetes trauma and no support system black men we talked about that this is where y'all come into play for each other checking in on each other you have to have a support system and look for these signs as well all those other signs i listed the excessive fear worry confusion feeling sadness uh coping having difficult difficulty coping with your problems day to day when those things really start to interfere with other areas of, of your life is when you need to really be concerned when all of those things are starting to interfere with your other life such as your love life maybe you're angry a lot maybe your sex drive is too low maybe it's too high maybe you're having maybe you're short temper maybe you're feeling real down it's impacting your family it's impacting your loved ones it's impacting your significant other maybe you're missing work maybe you, this is contributing to financial issues legal issues homelessness self-harm social isolation because you're feeling these feelings and don't want to tell nobody these are all the things you need to check off on your list and if you need help running back those these things I just mentioned, reach out to me. Email me, send me send me a message, and I will be happy to try to assess you for anything that might be going on that you feel you are concerned about, or maybe a loved one has brought it to your attention and you want to be sure if there's something going on with you. Reach out to me. Okay? You have to utilize your resources. Don't self-isolate. Don't be ashamed. Don't feel guilty. Because to be honest, black men, all of this ain't your fault that you have these mental health disorders. Yes, you might be prone genetically. Yes, there might be certain things going on. But there's a lot of stuff that are beyond your control that has been created. Created to exacerbate your condition. So you have to be keenly aware of your vulnerability. To mental health disorders that's why your mental health is so important man that's why it is you got a lot of pressure riding on you not everybody can go through all that unscathed reach out for help i hope this helped y'all and again if you have any questions drop some comments below feel free to visit my website at itransformyoucoaching.com Email me, message me. I'm here to help. Okay? So take care of yourself, men. Take care of yourself. 
And until next time, be well.